Baroque here. Just go back to the Renaissance for a second, School of Athens. Renaissance is perfection, the highest point of painting. You want to know School of Athens, Michelangelo and Sistine Chapel and Leonardo really, really well. And this is kind of the perfection high point of Renaissance painting. All right, then just moving forward, Venice is in the 1500s, known for beauty, color paintings. This one's famous for um, basically a beautiful female figure. And this is going to come up later uh, in, the, in modern art, Venus of Urbino. Um, then also in the 1500s, Adam and Eve Durer. Durer is called the Leonardo of the North. Uh, he's famous for being a northern painter, but he paints Renaissance style, naturalism, contraposta, ideal kind of classical beauty, but in the north with spooky Gothic northern aspects as well. And he did prints. So prints, you could make multiple copies. All right, another one in the north is the Eisenheim altarpiece, really famous for portraying Jesus in a truly horrific suffering form. I mean, he's really, really suffering. So it's an altarpiece. The function is to um, be in a church altar and to uh, and it, such as this. Also, it was in a hospital, and it gave people solace because Jesus suffered. And then, uh, but he uh, was okay with the resurrection. So if you are suffering, you will be okay too. Then in the north, we have religious wars across Europe. The north is going to be Protestant. The south is going to be Catholic. It's going to be horrible. Uh, religious wars. couple of works here, Allegory of Law and Grace. It's famous for being a Protestant painting. The Protestants don't like art. So the Catholics do, the Protestants don't. And it just talks about the difference between Protestant salvation and Catholic salvation. Okay, mannerism in the 1500s. The easiest way to deal with mannerism is it's the opposite of the Renaissance. You know, the Renaissance is solid, stable. This one is off balance. It's uh, look at the odd posture, odd skin, odd stances. Everything is odd with mannerism. It's still Jesus, but the style is very, very different. Side by side, you can see it best with the Renaissance. All right, front piece of Codex Mendoza. This is a really a work about the history of uh, Mexico or the Aztecs. And it's connected with Spain because it, would, it had Aztec artists, but it was made for the Spaniards. So I would know this one pretty well, actually. Front piece of Codex Mendoza. It's history. It's a calendar. It has the, I think we covered this one with the Latin works. Okay. All right, now the Baroque, we've got a few things going on to be aware of here. You've got the Southern Baroque, which is like Italy, which is almost which is Catholic counter-reformation after the religious wars of the Reformation. It's kind of the Catholic comeback. Then you have a few superstar artists you just want to be aware of. They're almost in their own league. Velasquez of Spain, Rubens of Flanders, Bruegel, and then Northern Baroque is Dutch or Holland or the Netherlands. It's all the same thing. Two superstars, Rembrandt and Vermeer. All right. So the first one for Baroque, uh, we have the Church Il Gesù. And let's look at these Catholic Italian works here. Okay. All right. Counter-Reformation 1600s is the art of persuasion. The Catholics will use art on purpose to spread the word of God. All right, Il Gesù means it's a church, but what's really famous is the ceiling. And uh, basically, Baroque is going to take, this is Renaissance math, and they're going to elaborate. Double the columns, it's more decorative. But really famous for this church here is this ceiling, and the ceiling just explodes to the sky. And the Baroque, you almost have a Hellenistic, dynamic movement, emotion. It really makes you feel the emotion here. That's a Baroque ceiling of Il Gesù. All right. That's a Renaissance ceiling, math, simplicity, order, Baroque ceiling, dynamic, emotion. They want you to feel it. There's Michelangelo, tells the story. Here, we feel it. Okay. Then this one is um, San Quattro. Look at the, the walls that warp or bend. And so the inside, you know, the, the simple square, you still have geometry, but it's very dynamic. It's got movement. This is one of the first Baroque churches. So Baroque does have the math of the Renaissance, but it expands and it moves like the walls on the outside. All right, Calling of St. Matthew by Caravaggio, very famous painting here. And uh, he uses tenebrism, which is light. And basically here, the light is of God and he paints. 
and we have here, it's a biblical story, but it's a moment of somebody being saved, and Caravaggio puts you in the spot. Here, this is up in heaven far away. Here, this is on the streets. So Caravaggio brings it down to street level where you can really see and feel a, 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 a transformation of someone. And then the icon of the finger uh, that goes back up here to Michelangelo. All right, just Caravaggio is so famous, people will copy him, and we see that bold spotlight. This is Gentileschi. That's that Caravaggio drama. All right, Ecstasy of St. Therese is a really important work here. There's the church, and it's multimedia. And here, when you zoom in here, it's, it's capturing spirituality through a sexual metaphor. And here, but it's dynamic, multimedia, movement, pathos, like the Hellenistic. Looks like the opera, looks like a sculpture, looks like painting, and again, light. You want to know this one really well. And of course, similar to Hellenistic. The Baroque is similar to Hellenistic, dynamic, the movement. You can see it side by side. All right, this is um, Rubens, and this is uh, just, he's from Flanders, but this is not a religious work. This is about the Marie de Medici and the king, and it's all about a marriage. And it's an over-the-top uh, painting showing how these, the king and Marie de Medici should marry. And it's a Baroque piece. Baroque tends to be uh, diagonal, dynamic, Hellenistic. All right, and that's, uh, you know, the gods are there. Everybody's concerned about this marriage. It's very over the top. Okay, Bruegel is called Bruegel the Peasant, and this is um, really just people hunting, and, and his thing, he was called Peasant Bruegel. It's famous for showing regular people, peasants, common people, but making them look uh, noble. Uh, they're not like uh, poor fools. They're, they're presented truthfully for who they are, northern work. All right, Velasquez, one of the most famous works ever. He deals with point of view. We don't know what we're looking at. Is it a portrait? Is it the most interesting portrait? Is it a genre painting? Is it a portrait of him? A must know. You want to know this one really, really well. Velasquez. All right, uh, then just there's a map there, just Europe. Uh, just now it's going to go stay up here in the Netherlands here. They're going to be Protestants, and they're going to be very prosperous Protestants. They're going to have a lot of portraits. Rembrandt is a, does portraits. Here's like a medical school. Here's your portrait of him with uh, his wife, Saskia. And he was very good at capturing the personality of someone in a portrait. He also did etchings, which uh, he could like, such as this one here. So basically these are portraits. And his light is, he used light for mood. And his self-portraits are very authentic. Movies do light, light with mood. And that's an etching. All right, Vermeer, definitely women, quiet, pay, quiet place here. You want to know this one really, really well. Famous for Vermeer does perfect compositions. And he has some subtle uh, spirituality here, but that's Vermeer. We want to know him well. Okay, um, this is Angel with Archibus. This is famous for, it's an angel, but an angel who's a warrior. And this is in Latin America. So this is the time of the broke Catholic Counter-Reformation. Screen of Belgrade. This, is a, uh, this was really about the connection between Japan, the Philippines, and the Americas. And on one side, it's got a battle in Europe. And on the other side, it's a domestic landscape scene. Version of Guadalupe, we'll cover that one when we cover the uh, Latin works. Okay, uh, in this one here, this is a giant mosque, and it was in Eastern Europe, and they wanted to make a mosque bigger than Hagia Sophia, so it's famous for being a monumental, massive mosque. Okay.